international funds are a relatively new uh, segment that we've seen uh, flourishing very well in India. Uh, how do you see their growth over a period of time? And uh, why is it that initially uh, we have international funds that are focused mainly on the US markets? Of course, newer ones are looking at uh, the Asian geography too. Yeah, you know, so um, you know, I think the thesis comes from, you know, portfolio theory. Uh, I think if you look at most portfolio, most investors outside of India, you know, so if you look at investors in the UK or the US or even Southeast Asia, you know, you'll see that a lot of their portfolio is devoted towards companies and stocks outside their home country. You know, and I think uh, in India, this was not the case. But I think today people have realized that a part of your portfolio should be exposed towards stocks and sectors and companies outside of your home country. And what we've seen in the U.S. markets in the last 10 years, 15 years, I think the potential to wealth creation is very, very high. You know, I think uh, um, I, I do believe that, yes, uh, you know, U.S. is 60 percent of global GDP market cap. You know, Absolutely. so I think an international investing is a category. The first obvious market that you can look for is the U.S. market because you're looking at uh, the biggest market, also a very fast growing market. The second thing to why I think U.S. markets are important is because you know, it's one market where you have global, globally, global business models. Mm -hmm. You know, at uh, just the S&P 500, which is the top 500 companies in the U.S., about 60 percent, 55 to 60 percent of the sales is actually happening outside the U.S. You know, so mm -hmm. I think when you're looking at global investing, you want to buy global stocks. And the center, the exchange, or the country which holds the most amount of globally diversified business models happens to be the U.S., which is why I think U.S. tends to be the first category. And now, obviously, you know, once you have the U.S. in your portfolio, I think it makes sense to add, say, uh, emerging markets or developed markets. But I think U.S. tends to be the most popular because of how well diversified its capital markets. When you look at international funds, and uh, share this with our uh, uh, viewers, uh, that there is an in, uh, there is an additional kicker. Uh, that these funds get because traditionally we've seen the rupee depreciate definitely versus the US dollar as also weaken against uh, several other currencies. So there is a kicker involved apart from the fantastic return uh, that the underlying index already gives. Please explain that. Yeah, so you know, the um, and so you know, buying international equity, you're actually buying not one but two asset classes, you're buying you know, US stocks. And you're also buying U.S. currency, and what we've seen is that the currency the you know, return one? you know tends to depreciate by two to four percent every year for the last 15, 20 years. So I'll give an example. And two to four percent might not be a big number, but actually, if you look at the numbers, the, the Nasdaq index, for example, the fund in question, you know, if you look at just the Nasdaq index in the U.S. over the last 15 years' time, it's actually gone up six times. But hmm. if you if you convert this in INR. It's actually gone up 12 times in India. You know, so that is, uh, so I think uh, you're looking at you know uh, the INR depreciations. So you're buying a U.S. currency, which anyway is a good thing because you know increasingly as customers we are you know traveling abroad, we are buying more comparative goods. returns. So I think uh, we are our spending is also in line with the U.S. dollar. So I think it makes sense to have some of that in your portfolio. And lastly, also, and this is uh, this is something that people also don't realize, but in but the dividend payments in the U.S. companies tend to be a lot higher than Indian companies. You're looking at close to one and a half two percent dividends every year, which also adds up very meaningfully to your portfolio. So I think if you combine dividends, the U.S. currency as well as U.S. stocks, I think it's a very good value proposition for anyone who's looking to create wealth in international in investing internationally. Presuming that the overall portfolio is for about 10 lakh rupees uh, in the mutual fund category, how much would you want uh, the international uh, funds to be? Yeah, you know, so this is very important. You know, we obviously talked about, you know, wealth creation in the international domain. But actually, you know, one of the key reasons to why a lot of our investor base invest in, invest in sort of international funds is actually portfolio diversification. You know, what we've seen is that... Um, you know, Indian markets and U.S. markets tend to move in very different directions. So when you're having a Nasdaq or an S&P or any other international fund in a portfolio, you're essentially getting the very similar returns than what you would get in India. But your risk is coming down dramatically. International equity is one such asset class where return is exactly the same or maybe higher, but risk comes down dramatically. So we believe that, you know, portfolio diversification is very important and international is an asset class that should be there in our portfolio. So we believe that out of the 10 lakh rupees that you're looking at investing, 
you know, I, I would say, you know, at least, you know, 1.5 to 2 lakh rupees is something that investors could look at investing in international stocks or funds. If you like the video, do like, comment, share and subscribe. 